Yo, 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 welcome everybody. My name is Tiana Stone, the creative, and you are tuning in to a new episode of The Creative Process. And I have a very, 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 very special guest, a friend of mine, uh, just an all around talented, incredible artist, oh, so Karen sweet. Smith. Yay. Applause, 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 applause as well. Applause. Oh my gosh. Yes. Bravo as well. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, I, I don't know. I would just love to dive right into it. I know, it. whatever you, you know, yeah. so comfortable here. So I want to say, yeah. Thank you again for being on the show. Um, yeah, let's let's dive into it. Let let everybody know um, who you are, what you do, and yeah. You know, you say what I do. I, I don't always know what I do. Um, I see a lot of clips and different things. So I'll say um, from the clips, I kind of get an idea what I do. But one of the things I, I think I do is, is pass the piece. And it just so happens that I pass it through my my writing as a playwright, as a director, as a percussionist, which is where I make most of my living from, um, poetry, uh, curating projects, and I an eye for the arts so I can like curate these different things that are floating around in my head because... 365, I'm always thinking about something mm. creative to do. So I think that's that's where I am. I'm a multidisciplinary artist, as they use those words when you're filling out grant forms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to say that one. I'm a multidisciplinary artist. Love that. Love that. Plus, and a humanitarian. Oh, love that. Love that. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean... um. So I guess one of the things that I'm always curious about when it comes to artistry and like our purpose and our our passion, um, the question of it's it's kind of like a um, the chicken or the egg type thing. I like, know, right? Which came, it? First? which came first? The chicken or egg. so for you, which which one would you say came first? Your your calling in percussion and uh, artistry or um, your humanitarian work and your work so deep. I think they all go hand in hand overall. I think in some shape or form, some shape or form, you know, as an artist, because we're so sensitive, um, I think that's where the humanitarian part comes out, is that we kind of put our energy into whatever it is that we're doing, you know, and and we want to help others, you know, as well, even entertaining others, you know. Entertainment is, is a form of, of therapy. It's like, um, oh, I'm, I'm sad or I'm going through something. Let me go turn on a movie, you know, or go to hear some jazz or some kind of concert or see a dance performance or take a take a hobby, a craft or something. So I think that, you know, that's our job. That's what we do, you know. And I think that that, that has to be in there, too. I mean, you want to be able to make a living and, and things like that, but I, I find artists the same time to be very much giving back in some shape or form you know that. even if they don't do it like they have a favorite charity which a lot of people do but um i think there's a there's something about you know going to that other space you know and um taking others with you um and w- which is the audience you know it's kind of like for that moment we're one you know yeah even if we hate each other later we're one <laughs> right now no yeah. i love that because that actually reminds me of how we got connected. Mm-hmm. Um, so, quick story. Um, when I was in Backstory. college, <laughs> when I was in college, a thousand um, years ago. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. It probably feels yes. like that now, but it, no. <laughs> it does. No, it really does. Um, but back when I was in college, I was taking a poetry course from uh, Dr. Kamika Williams. Yay, yay! Love you. Shout out. Shout out. And. Uh, I was tasked with going to a physical place and a physical e- event, and I found out about Karen uh, hosting these amazing drum circles at the Free Library. They're um, coming back. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. <laughs> they yes. were post, post, the, uh, pre-COVID, so now they're it's post-COVID, so now mm-hmm. they're coming back next oh week. Oh, my gosh. You know, yes, exactly, because that, that happened right before COVID. <laughs> Yes. So the fact that you're able to go back to the free library. I after, know. Isn't that something? Yeah, that's that's, that's really years. nice. Yeah. Yeah. How, how, how's it been prepping for that? Um, the best thing about it is that I don't really have to bring a lot of instruments. I do bring some of my favorite instruments with me. But really, the instruments at the main library are there. So I use a lot of their percussive stuff. Mm. 
And I, I think that's so wonderful that um, that 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 is available for people to uh, use their library card to to take out instruments, you know, yeah. for three weeks or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's wonderful. Even if you don't play, it's something to do. You know, it's like it's free. <laughs> it's just exactly. like getting a book or, you know, audio, whatever, you know, it's, it's free. Yeah, that's a really good resource. If anybody's interested in, you know, borrowing an instrument like you would borrow a book at the free library, it's, it's right yeah, there. Yeah, it's a main library. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. It's right there. Yeah, yeah. I'm really excited about that because I feel like one of the things that I, I admire and love about you is your ability to hold space for people um, in such a artistic and beautiful way. Like, what what's your mindset when it comes to creating and holding a space for people in, in that capacity? <laughs> good, good question. I don't know. <laughs> I think what, what ends up turning out, I don't really know how to answer that question other than, you know, you meet people where they are, you know, and, and uh, there's no judgment. I think that's the most important thing. Just like kind of like opening up your space, like here, open up your space and, um, and allow people to be who they are that moment no judgment you know whether they want to play the instruments or they want to just hang out you know or they want to um you know dance or do poetry whatever happens when you start hear hearing those rhythms so i think it, it's just creating a safe space is so important where people want to trust you with your time because it's their time too it's not just me it's their time as well so it's like wow i'm gonna i'm gonna hang out for five minutes it turns into 15 and 30 and you know before you know it, the hour and a half is over, mm -hmm. you know, because you're having such a good time with mostly people you don't know. You know, that's the real world to me. You know, so many people come through not always uh, knowing that the that the uh, the circle exists, you know, this drum circle is existing. So, yeah, that's what I love about what I do. And, and, and I do it everywhere and everywhere and anywhere, you know, outside and inside. Yeah, let let, let platforms. Let the people know like what what have been what have been oh God, I can't speak. <laughs> what are some of your, your voice is still getting here. Your brain <laughs> is here, but your voice has more. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what have been uh your favorite past experiences or, or even past performances? I can I can think of a couple for me, from you, but you go first. Oh boy. Um I don't have favorites, but I do have a few highlights that still stick in my mind. Mm -hmm. Like one of the things I got to do, uh, a, couple, a few things, I've gotten asked to support people who are who are about to transition mm. um, from the world, you know. So I've taken my sounds and either been by their bedside in their private home or at the hospital. Um, so I think that's so, that's that's miraculous. I think that, you know, Life is miraculous in that way, so I felt feel like part of that process, you know, it, the, the sounds help you with, you know, easing whatever whatever is left attached to this earth or the, or your body, you know, makes it easy for that tra transition to happen. I guess takes away to me, the, you know, the last of possibly fears, et cetera, anxiety, all those things that comes with, you know, find you're finding peace, and I feel like I'm kind of leading that way for you mm -hmm. in one aspect. I feel like that's what I've been called to do as well, you know. That's and not to cool. so much get paid to do it. I just want to do it. If somebody asks me, I just want to do it, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm not looking. It's kind of like uh, if I was a mind reader, I wouldn't want to charge for that. So I, I feel like this is something. If I'm truly a mind reader, I, I would want to give it away. I would want to just assist you with whatever feeling I got coming up, and so the same thing with that. That's one of the, that's one of my highlights, and I think that another highlight is well, was part of this organization. Is that um, I'm all about climate change too, and anything to help prevent, um, help save the earth, and and all the things, all the elements that we need um, on here. So I was part of an organization that's based in Louisiana who did these blessings of the waters, and it actually happened during the heart of COVID. So it, it, they went, for seven months, they went to different parts of the, um, of the um, I guess, from the Mississippi 
where the Mississippi uh, and Ohio rivers come together. So they went from the top to the bottom. And the bottom was where it came into, uh, it was um, uh, Louisiana was the final stop. And that was amazing, you know, to go in different places with all these uh, women, women of color, Native American women, and lead this um, this voyage of, um, of, of, of bringing peace to to us and the waters, you know, giving back and uh, through rhythms, through songs, through rituals. That's what I was a part of that. And that, that still stays like right up front there in my mind. That's, a, that's some highlight. There's other things that I've touched, you know. I love working in schools with the kids. I love coming in that. But those two like stand out when I think about, I won't say favorite, but just, just such highlights in my life, you know. It was just like unbelievable. I was part. I'm, I'm part of that, you know. Even that shocks me too. It was like, wow, I was really part of that. Yeah. That's beautiful. I love that. And oh man, that that pokes my interest about. Um, so when it comes to finding those those organizations and and finding those um, people who you love to connect with, um, it's probably a combination. But I'm curious, like. Do people usually come to you or do you feel like those opportunities just find you? I think that what has happened, like in the beginning, it was me trying to find those opportunities, whatever they were. You know, busking on the street was one of them, mm-hmm. you know, and that's how people actually started seeing me. It wasn't so much um, that I was already being in places. You know, I had no idea how I was going to do it. You know, I kind of stepped out on faith. I left my so-called cushion job. That I had with benefits and, you know, uh, a regular salary that came in every two weeks, you know, Mm -hmm. not that I was really uh, financially stable because you always think that all you need is a job, you'd be financially stable. And I had just as many bills and less now. Um, But um, it was, you you know, it's it's taking a chance because you got to believe in what you're doing. So I believed in in 2012 that this is something I have to do. I kept trying to do it before, but I said, I don't want to try anymore. I have to do this. I have to be a full-time artist by any means necessary, you know, that's legal, (laughs) you know. (laughs) But I have to figure out all the things that I do. How do I make them resourceful? And um, it was trial and error, but, you know, somewhere along the line, because like I said, I put myself out there. uh, It was believing and what I did, and hearing from the wonderful sister Sonia Sanchez said to me one time, because I have gotten to work with her over the years, she said, oh, you know, um, it really is visibility than revenue. I'm like, oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. She's old. She's done this. You know, she don't, she don't even remember how her life really started as an artist. But I didn't give her credit at the time because I was so frustrated, you know, because I always said, I'm out there. I'm doing I'm." I'm being very visible. I'm being patient. I'm taking whatever. And there was just this one day that um, it just, when I, I started realizing that, hey, you know, things are happening. And I, it was like two years, by 2016, something started happening. By 2018, I started realizing I'm not looking for work anymore. Like people calling me, like you just asked me. And they're calling me, they're texting me. I post all the time on my social media, and that was giving me the visibility that she was talking about. Then the revenue came, you know, and then the grants came, and you know, just def- putting me in, in places with people that were really doing some amazing things, you know. And I could do more than just playing, not just on the street or in clubs. I could do more with what I what I have, you know, because different different folks were calling me from different um, walks of life. You know, not just in the arts per se. And it was amazing. And it's still happening. You know, I haven't had to look for a gig since 2016 came in. And it is now 2024, Mm -hmm. you know. And and that's pretty much. But I failed, if you want to call it fail. I was trial and error uh, quite a few times before this, you know, because I'm originally from New York. So um, I started very early. I'm 60, going to be 64 this year. So. (laughs) <laughs> I started very early, like at 19, I was determined to be a full-time artist, you know, 
and it didn't happen. And I, uh, I kept trying again. I would get a secure job or whatever you want to call it, many jobs so I can do what I wanted to do with what, you know, being, being flexible. And still it wouldn't happen, you know. And, um, and there was one other time that I stepped out so-called in faith. And it failed so bad, I had ran. <laughs> oh. I had ran to get find a job, you know, because it was just failing. I said, no, no, I can't fail, you know. I can't go, I can't, I can't, you know, I can't lose like that. So, but this time I said, no matter what, I don't care what it looks like, you cannot go back. You cannot try to find a, a so-called secure job, if you, whatever that means. You know, you have to stay true to your passion. And um, and I believe that you know you have to stay true to it. You you have to see it. You can't expect others to see it for you. You have to see it and believe it. It's really there. And then the others will will let you know that it is there. You know, but you because there will be others that won't. That will say no. You don't. You know. You don't have it. Or oh, right, not right now. You say yeah, you got something, but not right now. Mm-hmm. You still have to believe you are right now. You know. You know, because everything has a mean time. But um, right now, this is what's happening. And it's, and it's been, you know, I couldn't change a thing. I, sometimes you say, oh, if I could just change. No, I wouldn't change a thing. You know, I was supposed to fall down. I was supposed to get evicted. I was supposed to lose my car. I was supposed to, you know, I was supposed to go through all the things that, that I went through over the years, you know. And I was, but I know that, you know, after every storm, there's a rainbow. I definitely know that. And so, you know, I'm sure there'll be other storms or whatever, but I feel like regardless, there'll be a rainbow after. Jeez Louise. We could end <laughs> the episode right there if we wanted to. It's a lot. <laughs> but that was, no, that was beautiful. Because, I mean, there's there's so many things. I mean, one of the things that I'm learning through, especially when it comes to the artist's journey, is, um, you know, our relationship with failure. And mm-hmm. how we have to rethink it and reshape it into something that it is not like a downfall or um, a detour. It is a part of the creative process. It, it is. is a part of the. You journey. have to believe that. Mm-hmm. You know, you're gonna fall. It doesn't matter what what career you choose. You're going to fall. You have to, in some shape or form. It's not gonna always be sunny and bright. You know, the weather tells you that. It's just not going to be. It's going to be what it is, and you have to be able to ride out whatever it is, you know, and not be able not to take it personally, even though it feels like it's very personal. And Bill, have a support system because you know we're not in this world by ourselves. So, you know, and sometimes you do want to put the covers over your head. I got that, but you can't stay there. You just can't stay there. You have to have somebody to talk to or some bodies, you know. And, and if you're a writer, you know, having a, a, a writer, being part of a writer's group is a beautiful thing, you know, because it helps you with constructive criticism because you're going to get it, mm-hmm. you know, and you got to be able to take it because people are going to have opinions. Anybody who comes and see you is going to have an opinion, you know, so you have to be able to, it helps you with that. You know, you're not gonna. All, you don't have to like everything. You know, like somebody says, like, "Oh, I didn't. I didn't really like that character." Mm-hmm. It's like, why did you pick that one? You know, so it's like that. That's their opinion. You know, so but doesn't mean that you know doesn't take away that you're not a good writer, or a musician, or a dancer, or whatever. You know, say it determined through it all. I love that. Yeah, I love that. Yep. Oh man, I don't know. Kind of shifting gears a little bit i'm interested to know more about like i mean i know you're a writer Mm -hmm. i'm very interested to learn more about like your writing process because personally i kind of or how we met i know you as a percussionist Mm -hmm. and as a performer so are you writing something right now yeah yes okay (laughs) yes Ah. (laughs) can you tell us more about that please um i'm a you know, I'll be honest with you. I, I started writing before the percussion piece came out. I always was tapping on something. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I write in rhythms in some shape or form. And maybe everybody does. I don't know. But I feel like I definitely write with rhythms. I can't technically listen to music when I'm writing. I need kind of like some kind of silence. Mm. But um, 
And then there's times where I can listen to music when I'm, when I'm writing. I don't own a television, so I don't do television, you know. Um, but so all of my creativity comes from people that I see, you know, something strikes me and I, I need to write about it, whether it's a poem or a short story or a play. But writing was really my first tool. I was, I was such a shy kid that that's what I did. I, I used to write. I used to draw and I used to write. I used to like drawing. But I didn't show people what I did. I just did it. And then um, we listened to so, so much kind of music at home. I was always, like I said, tapping to something. And I realized, you know, I really like to play, you know, as well. But I thought it was going to be my writing that would really set off first because I really love to write and draw. I also love to draw. I was trace on things, you know, do um, uh, more so uh, comic book strips, characters. I love that. <laughs> I love to, like, I look at it and then I, like, like, create it, you know, not trace them, but actually write separately. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that my career would even lean towards my art at some point because in my uh, getting ready to go into high school, the popular school at the time, when I was going to school was Erasmus Hall in Brooklyn. Mm. And that was the school for like, it's like the creative arts here. At the time that was like the creative arts school, mm -hmm. you know, like Kappa. And I, that's where I wanted to go. I was like, I was going to take these, uh, cause it wasn't my grades cause I was good in school, but it was my artwork that didn't pass. Mm. That's why they didn't take me. It's just, at least that's what they told me. It was a predominantly white school too. Don't get yeah. me wrong, mm -hmm. but and I'm sure they got to fill their quota oh, if they yeah. even looked at my work, you know. But you had to be interviewed and everything too. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the school I really wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And when I did not get the okay to go there, I just threw all my artwork out. <sighs> there was like no more. I was like, I took it so personally. It's like I'm not an artist, you know. So what can I do? You know, and I was still tapping on things and, 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 you know, I said, I love to write and create stories somewhere along the line. Maybe some something will happen in that area. And that's um, <laughs> one, one funny story, though, is because I love plays and I love going to live plays in school. We had plays. And one year um, before I left elementary school, they they did the, um, the King and I was popular at the time. They mm. did the King and I. So um one of my neighbor's son and myself, we fell in love with it, the king and I, because it was also the movie too. And we um we used to pretend in his yard, you know, do the reactment of the king and I. Uh -huh. And so we got some of the kids together and um and uh I said I said, We're gonna do the king and I. You know, I told him, We're gonna do the king and I. We're gonna have it in the backyard, my backyard, and um and we're gonna have, you know, refreshments and things like that and make it a big thing. And we, we started gathering some of the kids on the, on the block and just was going to do the king and I, you know. And we only knew one part for sure with, <laughs> where the king welcomes his, you know, the kids coming in and stuff. That's the part that we were going to do. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and we were just telling them what to do, you know. And and um, that's that was one of the first productions I did. Love was that. the short version of the king and I with the kids on the block being... Uh, <laughs> The, uh, the the kids um, that were in the, the King and I, and somebody played the King. I don't even remember who <laughs> who played the King. So it was that's a, that's the part we did. The entrance of the children, you know, coming in. I love that. Know? And I was the teacher. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot her name um, in the movie, but yes, Miss Anna. I think it was Miss Anna. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, so that was one of my early productions. I love that. <laughs> I love that. The king and I. <laughs> started young. I, I started I, very young. I was mm -hmm. 10 years old, going on 11, I think, something like that. Mm -hmm. I was impressed by the king and I. I love that. Yeah. That's, oh, man. Yeah. And music, because it was a musical. I used to, you know, music. You know, just like. It goes very much hand in hand yeah. with your artistry. I love that. Yeah. Because I, I know that sometimes there, some people can create, um, like a separation, but I feel like as as multifaceted artists, it's it's pretty easy for us to kind of slip and slide between mediums, and I I think that's really cool. Yes, slip and slide between mediums. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. So one teacher, an acting teacher, told me to to learn it all. 
because um, I was into acting too in my time in New York, and I took the um, took a class, um, and that's what he said to you know he's because he asked me what it, what do you want to do? I said I want to be an actor. He said okay, and what else? I'm like what else? You know I want to be an actor. That's what he said. Learn everything. Learn to hang lights. Learn to work the box office. Learn this. You know, everything possibly. Because you don't know what's going to open the door for you. Mm. You know, one thing you want to do is get through that door. Whether you're, you know, taking tickets or, you know, hanging lights or sweeping the stage or whatever you're doing, you know. Um, and then somebody will see what you do. You know, just want to be marketable. Learn everything. You just don't want to do one thing, you know. You won't get as far. I was so mad with him. <laughs> it's like he don't know me. I was like nineteen or twenty. I was cocky. I was like, oh, he he don't know what he's talking about. I'm that good. Mm -hmm. But to, I hear his voice every every day, and I always give that advice. You know, learn everything, mm -hmm. whatever it is, because you don't know. Yeah. Being a being a jack of all trades yes, is pretty. There's nothing uh, wrong with that. Pretty valuable, yeah. Because in the meantime, you'll be able to still eat because you, yeah, no, <laughs> you're seriously. still around your art in whatever shape or form. But you'll still be able to, you know, uh, offer more even, you know, mm -hmm. because maybe you're answering phones, you know, and somebody says, "I need somebody to, to um, to, to help uh, put a script together," and like you might you say, "Oh." As opposed to you know you never heard that because you're not in that room, mm -hmm. or whatever it, whatever it is. But you know it's like be as multitask. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to multitask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I I definitely agree with that. Love that. Love that. Ah oh, man, so there's so many. So, <laughs> I have so many questions. I have so many questions because Karen is just like. I'll I'll continue to deep dive about my love for Karen because Karen is <laughs> Karen is amazing because I feel like one of the things that I love um, is how uh, giving you are of your artistry when it comes to um, being a part of the community because we recently had um, like this event at the PS14 Foundation from. Mm -hmm. uh, United Youth for Change. Yeah. Awesome shirt. <laughs> awesome shirt. Dude. Awesome it's... shirt. Shout out. Shout, shout out. out. Hey. And, um. Hey, Jay. Oh, yes. Hey, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Um, Karen and I were supporting in that event, uh, basically just, like, providing a space for mental wellness and, and mm -hmm. giving people, you know, the opportunity so to, important. you know play with some percussion instruments and, and just be uh, whatever that means. And so I think that's, that's really, that's really important. Can it you, is. Yeah. Mental health is. Mental health. You can't, if you don't have a stability mentally, it's hard to be anything. Mm -hmm. It really is, you know, become, become no, nothing but dependent. And, and the goal is to be, to be aware of whatever it is that's going on. And to still be able to work independently, mm -hmm. you know, because we all got stuff. It's like, you know, it's hard to, if you have a, <laughs> if you have a past, you've got stuff, you know, unless you just started life today as an adult and you never had to do, have a childhood or anything. Mm -hmm. That's different, you know, but that's a robot also too. <laughs> oh yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> so, but if you're born, <laughs> That's pretty much you get a pass, and yeah. so that's how you can guarantee, and you have no control of that pass. You know, you can't pick your parents, your family, nothing, whoever, mm -hmm. you know, raise you, whatever. So, but you learn from it, and um, for sure, it just come to that experience that kind of sets the uh, foundation of how you view the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Oh, you know what? I'm I'm interested because I. Th I think you told me this, but maybe it accidentally slipped my mind. I didn't realize that uh, you were born in New York. So born in Brooklyn, New York. Born in Best Brooklyn. Style. Shout out. And Shout then out. now you're in uh, Philadelphia. <laughs> Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, Shout out Philly. <laughs> so I guess uh, when it comes to, you know, the arts communities between the two, um, what are some 
were some things that like you kind of or uh like speak out to you when it comes to not necessarily like Philly versus New York, but mm-hmm. things that you 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 like about both or some things that you know stick out? Um some things that stick out is I like uh <laughs> well, first of all, I know if, Philadelphia musicians love playing in New York and New Yorkers love playing anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times they don't even get the chance to play in New York per se, but mm. uh, you know, not that they don't, but, uh, and also the two do the same thing. They both claim people. So if you from um, Philly and you end up in New York and, and do well, they, 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 New York grabs you and they like, to, you know, you have no other past, you know, as far as you're not attached to any other city, but, no other but where they are and, and vice versa. And Philadelphia does the same thing. Mm-hmm. They <laughs> claim a lot of artists come through here and they claim them for Philadelphia, Philadelphia's mm-hmm. own blah, blah, blah. They say that about Grover Washington mm-hmm. and he was born in Buffalo, New York. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> they said that about John Coltrane. Mm-hmm. He was born in, in, in um, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. So it's just, you know. I, I think they both definitely do that. I think there was more because uh, it's smaller. I think there's uh, Philadelphia is smaller. Mm-hmm. I think there's more camaraderie. I think it's more of a. I think there's more of a bond. You can, you can bond with artists here. Mm-hmm. Philadelphia, uh, New York is so spread out. You know, it's harder to bond with artists as a whole. You know, you have them spread out different parts, mm-hmm. of different pieces. But in Philly, you can easily meet everybody at some point. Mm-hmm. In New York, that's possibly not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but here, you can meet everybody in just about any genre, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, because I worked with a lot of people here, a lot of different groups and individuals, et cetera, mm-hmm. organizations. And I did somewhat of that, maybe a quarter of that in New York um, uh, in the time that I was there. And in the time that I'm here, I, I, I probably like, tri- like triple that. Mm. So it's because it's easier here, it's smaller, you know, too. Uh, it's small in a, in a metropolitan way. Mm. <laughs> it has some metropolis to it, but it's, it's still, it's smaller than New York. Mm. You know, definitely much smaller than New York. Mm. So you, like I said, you can never meet some of the people that, um, like I do now. And sometimes I meet more people since I left New York who are from New York here. You know, uh, either they, they too have relocated or they have come to do a show or whatever. I met more people here. Mm. Um, and I've made more connections here. Even though I, like I was born and raised in New York and I come from a big family. I'm the youngest of eight. Oh, wow. I still, you know... In New York, I didn't really have a name. I was so and so sister. Here, uh, I have my own name. Uh, <laughs> it's the opposite. Uh, <laughs> That's what I loved about being here. It's like when I came here, I didn't know anybody. Uh, it was like really starting from scratch. It was like really starting from scratch. I didn't, I didn't know anybody. I wanted to go someplace and start from scratch. Uh, when, this seemed when closer. Did you move? I moved in '93. Um, okay. I got I really put more like effort to stay here by ninety four. Okay, but um, yeah, I um, yeah, like thirty years ago, mm-hmm. yeah, it's thirty years ago. So I um, you know, I, I I my experience here has been so much better because um, New York was so expensive, mm-hmm. and I, it's gotten I more expensive. <laughs> It's got more expensive, and even now, if I'm, you know, I, I wouldn't want to spend my money uh, on so much on rent and things like that mm-hmm. as people do there. Commuting, I hear, is, is I would just commute better. You know, here. yeah, mm-hmm. I would. I do take gigs in New York sometimes, yeah. but um, they they have to be worth them to travel and things like that. Too. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely um, or wherever you know, I've gone wherever to play. Mm-hmm. I'll go wherever to play overall. 
So it was worth, you know. <laughs> so I just recently got into the union, uh, the musician union. Oh, love that. Congrats. Yeah, thank you. Just as of um, shout out to mm. Jared and um, Marjorie mm-hmm. who supported me on, on making it happen. And my wonderful friend Denise King and, and Luke. Love that. Carlos O'Reilly uh, of kind of pushing me to to that direction. So I'm glad that I did it. And this, is a, this is some of the swag. Oh, that, I, I was trying <laughs> to read that. Love that. It's the swag. So, oh, man. Shout out to Local 77, AFM Local 77. Love that. Yeah. That's oh, me. that's exciting. Yeah, I figure um, it's time, you know, to make some changes. Mm. I became a pew. Fellow, fellow in um, August of, of 2023. I saw that. It goes through um, uh, July, the end of July of 2025. So it feels good to like kind of be able to create and not have to financially think in, at this time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shout out to all you. Pew. Yes. Thank you, Pew. Mm-hmm. <laughs> love that love that no that's that's so incredible yeah how, you know. if if you're down to talk but like how important is it to be a part of that for you well like, the one thing that makes it uh extremely exciting is the fact that you can't as an individual you can't apply mm-hmm. i think at one time you could apply but now you can't apply so somebody anonymously um, nominates you that's beautiful and I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know, you know. Uh, I've worked on projects that were pew related mm. from other organizations, but uh, you know, to, you to know think who, of that, mm. I, I have no idea, you know, who who. But whoever it is, thank you again, because <laughs> it feels good uh, to have this title, this particular label. I'm not into labels, but this label, I'll take. <laughs> And uh, this is, uh, yeah, so that was, I got the letter, I got an email from a few folks in um, February of last, oh, wow, it was a year ago. Mm-hmm. February of last year, I got this letter, email, saying that I was nominated for uh, a Pew Fellow, and if I was interested um, to apply, you know, reply back, and they would um, set up a time to meet by zoom i'm like okay sure yes of course right you know i'm stumbling like what yeah i'm typing i'm trying to get it all together and trying to be cool at the same time i'm trying to be cool but i'm not being cool <laughs> karen is cool Stop. <laughs> i was i was like wow i'm trying to you know i'm trying to type i kept messing up my name <laughs> I'm like, how, do spell, how do you spell karen oh god <laughs> but it was it was like that i was like oh my god it was oh, yes of course you know because mm-hmm. This letter comes, you know, with that letterhead and everything, you know, this email is so, you know, official. And it's like, what? Me? So I yes. I was like, okay, you know, and I had the interview. And once you get to the interview, then they send you a link, you know. And it was specifically in, in music as a musician. That was my category. Mm-hmm. So anything that I talked about had to represent that. Any links that I sent footage had to be about that, you know. And it's intense. That application is no joke. You know, they give you like six weeks to do it. So by the end of March, it was supposed to be in. And then it's another, uh, it's like four months Mm. of panel. They have this whole big panel on it. And the panel is not here. They were all over the place, you know. So mm. they're not supposed to know you. So, you know, they have uh, somebody in your category that oversees, you know, um, the panel discussion like mm-hmm. there's somebody for music there's somebody for theater there's somebody you know the different categories that you're nominated for yeah and yeah you they're supposed to pick 12 out of 30 there was 30 in the um the pot i said i would love to be one of those 12 but after i finished that application i was like you know what it's gonna be what it's gonna be and i just wanted to get rid of it <laughs> <laughs> So shout out to Jermaine Ingram and shout out to Dr. Chris Kenty for helping me, you know, through my application process. And shout out to Deborah Wright to um, also keep me sane throughout this time <laughs> as I was getting those words together. So, yeah, um, it's, it takes a village, you know, mm-hmm. no artist should be without one. You got to it oh, takes a village yes. and then some. 
And that was my village. And I let it go. You know, I even applied for some other stuff, you know, that I didn't get. Uh, I applied for some other grants mm -hmm. during that time. But that one was so exhausting. You know, at the same time, it's like I couldn't put as much of an effort in anything else. But I went through the motions of, of writing them and to try to just focus on something else. Mm -hmm. you know? And by August 1st, because they told us once we send it in, they said by the by September, by the early September, you know, I'll know. You know, either way they would let you know if you if you got it or didn't get it. Mm. When August 1st, that email came in, I, I saw the email from them. I'm like, oh, no, I didn't get it because they said September and they already letting us know that we didn't get it. Whoever, mm. you know, didn't get it. And that said, congratulations. I'm like, what? That's all I remember. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. All I did was cartwheels, you know, flipping all over. <laughs> I was like, what? My cat was freaking out. I was like, what's going on? It's just like watching me do this like tennis match back and forth, you know. <laughs> I was like, wow, banging on everything that I had. I was just love that. All I can remember is congratulations. That's what I was just <laughs> <laughs> That was how it started. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and I finally, after an hour or so, as I calmed down, I I read the whole thing. But one thing is said, you cannot say anything to anyone. Until we go public. I'm like, what? I can't. Anybody? I couldn't And that say. was like a month or plus? A month and a half. <laughs> oh, Lord. I could not say anything to anybody because if they found out, you would be disqualified. Oh, God. So it could not go public in any kind of way. But once they went public with it, then you could go public because there was a lot of things that had to be happen mm -hmm. prior to. So we were in meetings. We had to uh, do a video. Uh, we had to take pictures by their photographer. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a whole thing process. Formalities. It was, yeah, stuff. it was a lot of formalities. Yeah. We met with, um, got legal advice. We had met with a financial consultant of their, on their staff. You know, it was just a whole big process. You know, it was like, you know, it was like almost like the paparazzi was coming, <laughs> you know, doing all kinds of stuff. And, um, and then they... Um, they gave us a date when it was going to be announced once they had all their part done, you know, because it was 12 people that got picked. Mm -hmm. You know, the only ones that knew that um, I had gotten a pew uh, among the 12 people because we became visible from our first meeting mm -hmm. because it was on Zoom. So then I knew a few other people, but I still couldn't say anything public. It's like, oh, so-and-so, you know, but we couldn't say anything public. Mm -hmm. Even when we saw each other on the street, we couldn't say <laughs> We couldn't say, well, all you could say was hi. <laughs> Unless you were by yourself, you know, all they could say is hi, mm -hmm. you know. So, but until like, uh, I think they made the announcement on the 14th of, of September. I was mm -hmm. just so happy. They said, it's going, it's going live today. Now you can say something. I was like, thank you. Because <laughs> I couldn't hold it in any longer. I was so getting so frustrated. Because mm -hmm. all these things were happening. I could not, I was sending out bios of myself. Because I was some future stuff that was coming up, and I said, um, I can't write that yet because I can't. Not yet. I, I can't say anything. Not yet. <laughs> I can't say anything. It was so unfair. I've, I've seen you and everything. I couldn't say anything. Oh, God. I couldn't say yes. nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. All I could do was smile and say, yeah, well, nothing. I couldn't write it down. Yeah, nothing's going on right now. <laughs> That's right, because you don't know, you know, mm -hmm. if some, if, if, if somebody's going to say something to, yeah. and, or they having lunch with somebody, I don't know, whatever, you know. It's giving very much secret society. Oh my God, it was such that. a secret, but <laughs> I'm not good at secrets. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I was getting, starting to get sick because my stomach was just like oh, acting up because I'm keeping all this. <laughs> I'm like, what's wrong with my stomach? And I was like, oh my gosh. Because I could had to keep this secret, mm -hmm. you know, no matter what. I couldn't tell my family, you know, you got to be keep your secret. I said, I'm going to have something to tell you, but I can't talk about it yet. <laughs> it's like, what? What's wrong with you? It's like, oh, no. It's just that I just can't talk about it. I can't talk about it. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. That's, that's, I love that. You being a part of something like that is, it brings Yeah, it's a big joy. deal. Yeah. yeah. That's what makes it a big deal to me, mm -hmm. you know. I'm not really into things like awards and stuff like that. But grants, I think, that's so important because mm -hmm. you can do a lot with grants, you know. Yes. And it's always, you know, stuff you can do for the community in some shape or form. This fellowship has nothing to do with 
you uh, being project based, I should say, it really is what you want to do with it. If you want to buy a house, you want to pay off bills, you want to be a car, you want to travel, you want, you know, you just want time just to chill out for the next year, you know, or whatever. So, so be it. I love <laughs> you know, that. It's whatever you want to do with it. You know, they have stipulations what you really can't do with it. But yeah. overall, it's what you want to do. But, That's um, so cool. I plan on making some things happen, you know, too. And um, I can promote myself even more so as a writer. Yes. And I do have a new play that I just finished, um, the first draft. <laughs> Love that. I can call it, uh, it's, it's called I Beat the Devil Running, and I'm mm. so glad. You know, Love and, that. So shout out to Robin Watkins because I got that title from from her, her church experience. <laughs> <laughs> we used to say that too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, back in the early '80s, we were both in the um, at Brooklyn College at the theater department, and we would always be just playing around, BS, and just doing all kinds of crazy stuff, entertaining ourselves. And um, she used to talk about this lady at her church, and Miss So and So, and she would come in and it's like, "Hi, Miss So and So, how you doing? Well, child, I beat the devil running, and I'm so glad." And that's how we used to always address each other. <laughs> And I finally went like one night because I was writing and I said, this play, because I had I had started writing, writing it. I, it doesn't really have a title. So I had some working titles and that kept coming up that mm -hmm. I said, but that's so long. I said, so it's for colored girls who can consider suicide when the rainbow is not that enough. Is true. So I was like, so what? I was like, OK. I said, that'll be the title. And so that's the title. I beat the devil running. I'm so glad. It's, it's about sexual abuse in the black church. Mm. In the black church. I'm underlining that. Sexual abuse. Inappropriate behavior in the black church. Mm -hmm. Not the Catholic church, but in the black church. Mm -hmm. It's someone's personal story that I um, I, I um, made sort of like um, store, uh, made it possible for her voice to be heard through these different voices, these different stories that surround her story too, you know, but it's based on, on truth. It's her story. That's so important. It is, you know, and she's on the other side of it. She's no, she's not a victim to it. Mm -hmm. you know? um, she's very much moved on. What she hasn't been able to move on is being a part of a, another church, but she definitely, um, she has moved on as far as not sitting and being the victim, you know, and helping others, you know, and stuff. In fact, what made me even intrigued to tell her story is because she tried to do her dissertation on it when she was in uh, college, um, mm -hmm. getting her doctorate. And they told her no, they didn't want to, that wasn't, there wasn't enough research on it, let's put it like that. Mm. They said, but do the Catholic Church. Because they didn't want to touch it. They really didn't want to touch it, so... Mm. So she ended up doing, of course, the Catholic Church. But she, when she told me her story at this um, healing circle that we were both a part of, she, start, she started telling her story at that circle. And I just kept listening, you know, to her. Um, I, I talked to her afterwards. I said, I want to, I'd like to exchange information. I want to I wanna help you tell your story. And we started meeting a few times. I don't want to say her name. We started meeting a few times mm -hmm. over the, the past year. And by October was our last meeting. And that, that said that, you know, I have enough information. And by November, I started writing. And by early January, I was done with the first draft. But I kept putting it down because it was just too heavy. Mm. It was making me depressed. You know, it was making me too sad. It was, I was... You know, it's like, boy, things are going really well right now, but I sure can't shake this feeling that's going on. Mm -hmm. So I have to leave, leave the play. I got to step away for a moment, you know, because the characters, they're so real. And, and writing, when you're writing a play anyway, you know, or whatever you're writing, it doesn't say, okay, nine to five, Monday through Friday. It's like whenever, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like whenever, you know, whenever it could be afternoon, it could be early evening, it could be three in the morning, you know, whatever. Whatever day a week, you know, just starts going. So, um, but I'm 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 really excited seeing this play go somewhere. Love that. I'm looking forward to that. I beat the devil running. I'm so glad. <laughs>
That's a that's a hell of a title. Yeah, and it's something. It mm-hmm. really is. So oh, shout man. out to that lady in at the church in, in Brooklyn. They used to always say that. And my friend Robin always um just you know, emphasizing it. Mm-hmm. Oh man. <laughs> Love that. Love that. Oh man. <sighs> I can go on and on. <laughs> so many good things. I don't know. Uh, did you want to leave the audience with any gold nuggets? Because you've been dropping them all day. <laughs> all, all, all day. I hope to do an, another recording. I haven't done um, in, a musical recording in a while. So I hope and I hope that you can be on it too. Oh, please. You know, maybe even your band could be. Y'all hear know, that? <laughs> On that, my next recording, I would, I would like to do something that. before the year is out. Yes. This uh, fall is always my time of year to, to do something like that. So yes, we can talk more about it. Yes, I would love to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. I like your band. Your band is cool. Thank you. I like the sound, you know. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So that's definitely something that has to happen, that collaboration. It shall. <laughs> it shall. I'm manifesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're good people. Thank you. You yeah. as well. Thank you, Karen, so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. And, this is a pleasure. Yeah, and just being the incredible artist that you are. Like, you do it very seamlessly and, and just from the heart. Like, you could tell that it's from the heart. So I, I just appreciate that about you. And, yeah, love you. Love, love you. you back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. You rock. Oh, you do as well. <laughs> oh. Thank oh, you for man. having these platforms, you know. Thank you. you yeah. Talk and, and, and um, share share whatever for the next generation to see. Yes. You know, but whatever you do, don't beat up on yourself. Please don't beat up on yourself. Mm-hmm. I will. I will. Uh, well, y'all, I feel like uh, that that puts a bow <laughs> <laughs> on the episode. Um, but yes, I just want to thank you all for watching and for, like Karen said, just us being here and, and sharing our stories. Mm-hmm. And, and documenting, I feel like that's that's so important. Yeah. So thank you, Karen, so much for yes. being a part of the show and and me being able to put a stamp on your on uh j- just a small stamp on the big impact that you have as an artist and just being a part of the city. So thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for having me. It's yes. Wonderful. I love the space too. Oh God. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Rec Philly, for thank this you, Rec incredible Philly. space. Really appreciate it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna link all of Karen's info, her Instagram, uh, in the in the description of this video. But yeah, thank you guys so much for being a part of the creative process and uh I'll see you guys soon. Peace. <laughs>